Hey y'all, and welcome to the video. For this video, it's the latest video in our Q&A series. I have three questions to answer for this video. Question number one is, outside of Ram and Cummins, Dodge, is there anything else I like uh, as far as cars and trucks go? Is there anything else I'm interested in? The answer is absolutely. Um, Generally speaking, I'm a Mopar guy. I like the Hemis, I like the muscle cars, the Charger, the Challenger, the Viper, the Jeeps, and the old cars too. Uh, I've always wanted to have a 1950s Plymouth. Uh, if I had to choose what car I would want, I would say um, the Plymouth Fury from the late 50s. But I like the early 50s Plymouths too, and the early 60s as well. Um, I also like, as far as the when the muscle cars were real big in the late 60s, early 70s, the uh, Plymouth Roadrunner, either a 69 or 70 model, I really like a lot. That would be my favorite muscle car from that era. Uh, I also like a lot of other old cars, some GM cars. My grandparents had GMs, both sides of my family, when I was young, and as a kid, I really liked those cars. Um, one of the cars was a 1970, I'm gonna say three or four or five, Pontiac Catalina. It's a yellow car uh, with a white ragtop roof with V8 in it. Um, very cool car, I love that car. If that car was still around, I'd restore that car. <laughs> um, and on the other side of my family, my granddad had a 1980s Oldsmobile of sorts. It was a white one with a navy blue ragtop roof, and it had a 5.7 liter diesel V8 engine in it, and uh, I think he drove that car for over 20 years. Good car. Um, you don't make cars like that anymore. Uh, but some other cars. Uh, when it comes to expensive cars, I tend to like British cars. Bentley's, Rolls Royce is cool to me. Uh, Jaguar. I've always wanted a Jaguar. You know, I'm not ruling out a getting a Jaguar someday as a project car because you could pick up a 1990s Jaguar for real cheap and uh, yeah I'd love to have an XJ8 or an XJ12 the 12 cylinder be very hard to find but that'd be a cool project car uh, what else um, Volvos another I like always like Volvos uh, if I was to get a little little car just to zip around in and leave the truck sit for you know the city driving and the short hops yeah, i'd love to have a little volvo or something uh, the uh, two-door convertible with the manual transmission that would be really cool especially for me living here on the on the gulf coast to have a convertible to cruise up and down the beach in when the weather's nice that would be that'd be awesome uh, toyota uh, out of toyota's i like the forerunner it's really the the only Toyota that I really like a lot. Uh, Forerunner, I think, is just an exceptional SUV. Um, 1950s Oldsmobiles. It's another another uh, older classic car that I would love. Is the Oldsmobiles from the 50s with the rocket engine or or what have you in them? Another cool car. Uh, big rigs. I like. Um, I'm actually a big fan of cab over big rigs, kind of like the European style, but the U.S. has had some cab overs. Uh, I'm okay with the with the Peterbilts and the Kenworths, the classic ones, the long hood, but I'm not uh, jumping up and down over them. I really like the modern big rigs just as much. You know, uh, see the Volvos. I like Volvo uh, Freightliner. I like uh, the uh, Western Stars. Are really cool looking. Big Rig, I, uh, one of the companies that has a facility near me, they have Western Star Big Rigs, and I, I'm like, I, I, if I was driving, I, I want to drive one of those. I think they look cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's the rundown on on what I like outside of Ram and Cummins. Uh, if I didn't ha if I didn't have to have a pickup truck, if I didn't get so much use out of a pickup truck, or really need the capabilities of one. I would consider getting a, a larger SUV like a Suburban. I really like the more recent Suburbans, you know, around 2017, 18, those model years. I like those Suburbans a lot, I've driven one. And that would be one of my top picks as far as non-pickup trucks. 
Um, next question. Let's go on to the next question. How about uh, 09? 09 model year of Ram truck. Off to the other side of me. I commented in the last uh, Q&A video, or in, or in one in one video, um, that I thought it was an underrated model year. Why did I make that comment? What is it about 09 that it made me say it was underrated? Well, to preface, to uh, preface it, I don't think the 09 model of 6.7 truck is any better than a fourth gen of any year. But for the year, and when the truck was new, it was a good model year. Reason number one, emissions. So most of these older trucks have been emissions deleted by now. So it doesn't really give the 09 much of an advantage over the 08 and 07. But back in that time, emissions technology was new. And there was a lot of growing pains with it. The programming on the computer on board the truck for emissions and regeneration and so forth was not good out of the gate. There was a lot of problems with clogged up DPFs and so forth, and it was really inconvenient for the owners and it was really expensive for Chrysler when it comes to their warranty work. So it actually took like five, six, seven computer flashes, I'm gonna guess, before they actually had it sorted out. But by 09, they had that emissions stuff sorted out so that the emissions components would at least last a reasonably long amount of time. Um, Reason number two, fuel filtration. The uh, six seven came with a new design, a fuel filter with the removable canister and so forth. When it first came out, it had a fuel filter that was about the size of what you would see in a five nine truck in the stock canister. Eventually they modified this to have a larger canister and a larger filter as a result. And uh, I think it was still either way a five micron filter, but the larger filter gives you more surface area for filtration. Therefore, I think it's better. But what was good about the 07s and 08s, um, and the later 08s actually got this larger filter, but not every 08 did, is it was easily convertible. You simply spin off the small canister and spin on a new can canister that was larger with a larger filter. So it was easily convertible, but every 09 came that way from factory. Reason number three, steering linkage. Somewhere in the later 08 model year, they switched to the T-style steering linkage to reduce the uh, chances of having death wobble and, and so forth. The T-Style is just a better design overall. Uh, a lot of people call it the fourth gen steering linkage, although it was released during the third gen. And it was also, um, it was only used up through about 2012 or 13. So most of the fourth gens came with a new design altogether. So uh, every 09 truck came with the T-Style. You did not have to worry about upgrading your steering linkage if you had the 09. Some 08s came with it, some didn't. So that's three reasons why I thought 09 model year was underrated for its time. But the good news is if you have an 07 and a half or an 08, almost all these things have been done on these older trucks. The filtration was converted, the emissions is probably done away with altogether by most people, and the steering linkage was upgraded by many. Um, so that's, that's why I thought 09 was underrated. Question number three, what are some future projects for the channel? Uh, what do I have in the pipeline? Speaking of pipeline, exhaust on this truck. Uh, I've got a section of exhaust that's rusting out on me. There's even a few small pinholes in it where I can see that soot has leaked out a bit. Before that thing lets go and my back half of my exhaust falls off, I need to replace this uh, my, my section of pipe is 26 inches, but there's some designs uh, of piping that fits over each end of the exhaust that's more like 30 inches. So it'd be about two inches, three inches of overlap on each side. And uh, that's the design that I'm planning to go with and then I'll just clamp it there. It basically, it's a muffler delete pipe section. That's the part that is rusting out on me. So I'm going to upgrade to a much higher quality um, section like a uh, 409 stainless as opposed to what's on there right now is probably just some cheap four inch pipe that some guy put on there to replace his muffler so for for me it's it's a lo lower quality than the rest of my exhaust system so i'm gonna do that 
uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I think I'm going to put a new steering linkage on the 09 and bring the truck in for an alignment. Right now the truck has a slight leftward pull, which is weird because before I put these tires on it actually had a slight rightward pull. So I think they, they messed up the alignment and I don't want to have too much irregular wear on those tires. They do wear fine, but they are wearing slightly faster on the outside treads and the inside treads I'm starting to notice. So I might as well take it in for a new alignment and while I'm at it, replace the steering linkage because it's still the stock steering linkage with 259,000 miles on it. So I think it's about time to do that. And plus that pretty much completes my front end rebuild. Um, and then we're gonna do some trans oil changes. This truck's gonna get its auto trans changed and the 09 is gonna get its manual trans oil change. So I've gone from ATF four to, to 50 weight, didn't like the 50 weight too much because of cold weather and shifting stiffness. Now I'm going to try a new oil, I think, that is on the market. It's relatively recently released, and I think it's like more like a 30 weight, you know, a 5W30 style gear oil that is designed for this Mercedes transmission. So I'm thinking I'm going to give that a try, and that's going to set me up to possibly do a clutch upgrade. So if I'm going to go to a single mass flywheel clutch this fall or this winter or whenever, I'm going to want to have that thicker oil in there for noise control and then I'm going to want to overfill it a little bit for more gear rollover noise control. So I got to find something that's a bit less thick than the 50 weight. I mean I could go back to the 50 weight and deal with it, but I didn't like it very much. So that's if I'm going to single mass flywheel, which is what I want to do, that's a, that's a goal. So clutch upgrade is more long term but it could be within a few months that I actually pull the trigger and do it. So those are the three questions for this Q&A video. If you have questions that you'd like answered in a video of this format, post them down below. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video.